This is called Catalog of Unabashed Gratitude. And the two things you need to know, Sarah mentioned um, that I work with this community orchard um, in Bloomington. It's a real thing. You should go there now. Like things are starting to flower. It's incredible. Um, and it is really, it's, it's an acre of land. Someone just dreamt it up and then a bunch of people dreamt it with her and then we built it. We built it um, and it's there and you can go in. There's not a lock on the gate. Um, the other thing is that there's a kid that I reference who was not a kid yet. Her name's Era Lee. Now she's a kid. <laughs> Catalog of unabashed gratitude. <clears throat> Friends, will you bear with me today for I have awakened from a dream in which a robin made with its shabby wings a kind of veil behind which it shimmied and stomped something from the south of Spain, its breast a flare, looking me dead in the eye from the branch that grew into my window, coochie cooing my chin, the bird shuffling its little talons left then right, while the leaves bristled against the plaster wall, two of them drifting onto my blanket, while the bird opened and closed its wings like a matador, giving up on murder, jutting its beak, turning a circle and flashing again the ruddy bombast of its breast, by which I knew upon waking it was telling me in no uncertain terms to bellow forth the tubas and sousaphones, the whole rusty brass band of gratitude not quite dormant in my belly. It said so in a human voice. Bellow forth. <laughs> and who among us could ignore such odd and precise counsel? <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, I'm here to holler that I've hauled tons, by which I don't mean lots, I mean tons of cow shit, and stood yep. ankle deep in swales of maggots swirling the spent beer grains the brewery man was good enough to dump off holding his nose, for they smell very bad, but make the compost writhe giddy and lick its lips, twirling dung with my pitchfork again and again with hundreds and hundreds of other people we dreamt and orchard this way, furrowing our brows and hauling our wheelbarrows and sweating through our shirts. And less than a year later, there was a party at which trees were sunk into the well-fed earth, one of which, a Liberty Apple, after being watered in, was tamped by a baby, barefoot, with a bow, hanging in her hair, <laughs> Biting her lip and her joyous work and friends, this is the realest place I know. It makes me squirm like a worm. I am so grateful. You can ride your bike there or roller skate or catch the bus. There's a fence and a gate twisted by hand. There's a fig tree taller than you in Indiana. It will make you gasp. It might make you want to stay alive even. Thank you. And thank you for not taking my pal when the engine of his mind dragged him to swig fistfuls of Xanax and a bottle or two of booze. And thank you for taking my father a few years after his own father went down. Thank you, Mercy. Mercy, thank you for not smoking meth with your mother. Oh, thank you for leaving and for coming back. And thank you for what inside my friend's love bursts like a throng of roadside goldenrod gleaming into the world, likely hauling a shovel with her like one named Era Lee Ott, with hands big as a horse's, and who, like one named Era Lee Ott, will laugh time to time till the juice runs from her nose. Oh, thank you for the way a small thing's wail makes the milk or what once was milk in us gather into horses huckle buckling across a field. Hmm. And thank you, friends, when last spring the hyacinth bells rang and the crocuses flaunted their upturned skirts and a quiet roved the beehive, which when I entered were snugged two or three dead fist-sized clutches of bees between the frames, almost clinging to one another. This one's tiny head pushed into another's tiny wing, one's forelegs resting on another's face, the translucent paper of their wings fluttering beneath my breath and when a few drops to the frames beneath. Honey, and after falling down to cry, everything's glacial shine. And thank you too. And thanks for the corduroy couch I have put you on. Put your feet up. Put your feet up. Here's a light blanket. A pillow, thank you. A pillow, dear ones. For I think this is going to be long. <laughs> I can't stop my gratitude, which includes, dear readers, you for staying here with me, for moving your lips just so as I speak. Here's a cup of tea. I have spooned honey into them. 
And thank you, the tiny bee's shadow perusing these words as I write them. And the way my love talks quietly when in the hive is so quietly, in fact, you cannot hear her, but only notice barely her lips moving in conversation. Thank you, what does not scare her in me, but makes her reach my way. Thank you, the love she is, which hurts sometimes. And the time she misremembered elephants in one of my poems, which, oh, here they come. Garlanded with morning glory and wisteria blooms, trombones all the way down to the river. Thank you in which the river bends around the elephant's solemn trunk, polishing stones floating on its gentle back, the flock of geese flying overhead. And to the quick and gentle flocking of men, to the old lady falling down on the corner of Fairmount and 18th, holding patiently with the softest parts of their hands her cane and purple hat, gathering for her the contents of her purse and touching her shoulder and elbow. And thank you to the cockeyed basketball court on which in a half court, three on three, we old heads made up some runny nose kids a shambles. <laughs> And the 61-year-old, after flipping a reverse layup off a backdoor cut from my no-look pass to seal the game, ripped off his shirt and threw punches at the gods and hollered at the kids to admire the pacemaker's grin across his chest. <laughs> Thank you, the glad accordions wheeze in the chest. Thank you, the bagpipes. Thank you to the woman barefoot in a gaudy dress for stopping her car in the middle of the road and the tractor trailer behind her and the van behind it, whisking a turtle off the road. Thank you, God of Gaudy. Thank you, Paisley Panties. <laughs> Thank you, the organ up my dress. Thank you, the sheer dress you wore kneeling in my dream at the creek's edge and the light swimming through it. The coy kissing halos into the glassy air. The room in my mind with the blinds drawn where we nearly injure each other crawling into the shawl of the other's body. Thank you when I just say it plain. We fuck each other dumb. <laughs> and you. Again, you, for the true kindness it has been for you to remain awake with me like this. <laughs> Nodding time to time and making that noise, which I take to mean, yes. <laughs> or, I understand. <laughs> or, please, go on, but not too long. <laughs> or, why are you spitting so much? <laughs> or, easy, tiger, hands to yourself. I'm excitable. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm grateful. I just want us to be friends now, forever. Take this bowl of blackberries from the garden. The sun has made them warm. I picked them just for you. I promise I will try to stay on my side of the couch. And thank you, the baggie of dreadlocks I found in a drawer while washing and folding the clothes of a murdered friend. The photo in which his arms slung around the sign to the trail of silences. Thank you, the way before he died, he held his hands open to us for coming back in a waft of incense or the shape of a boy in another city looking from between his mother's legs or disappearing into the stacks after brushing by for moseying backs and back in dreams where, seeing us lost and scared, he put his hand on our shoulders and pointed us to the temple across town. And thank you to the man all night long hosing a mist on his early bloomed peach tree so that the hard frost not waste the crop. The ice in his beard and the ghosts lifting from him when the warming sun told him, sleep now. Thank you, the ancestor who loved you before she knew you by smuggling seeds into her braid for the long journey. Who loved you before he knew you by putting a walnut tree in the ground. Who loved you before she knew you by not slaughtering the land. Thank you, who did not bulldoze the ancient grove of dates and olives. Who sailed his keys into the ocean and walked softly home. Who did not fire. Who did not plunge the head into the toilet. Who said stop 
don't do that, who lifted some, broken someone up, who volunteered the way the plum tree that marks beside the raised bed in my garden is called a volunteer, like the arugula that marks itself between the blueberries, nary a bayonet, nary an army, nary a nation, which usage of the word volunteer, familiar to gardeners, the wide world made my pal shout oh and dance and plunge his knuckles into the lush soil before gobbling two strawberries and digging a song from his guitar made of wood from a tree someone planted. Thank you, and thank you who witnessed you necessary, who witnessed you beautiful, who witnessed you face deep in the magnolia bloom, nose gold dusted from the pollen you borrowed from the bees, who witnessed you loved, who witnessed you loved, who witnessed you loved, who witnessed you necessary and tumbling with delight, who witnessed you holding your beloved friend's face in your hands, weeping with joy, who witnessed you, who witnessed you, who witnessed you in the cove of your sorrow, witnessed you necessary, witnessed you unmurderable, you unmurderable, witnessed alive and barefoot and cackling with the birds in the garden's fragrant racket. Thank you, Zinnia and Gooseberry, Rebecca and Paw Paw, Ashmead's Colonel, Coxcomb and Scarlet Runner, Feverfew and Lemon Balm. Thank you, Knitbone and Sweetgrass and Sunshook and False Indigo, whose petals stammered apart by bumblebees. Good Lord, give me a minute. And Moon Glow and Cat Kid and Crook Neck and Painted Tongue and Seed Pod and Johnny Jump Up. Thank you, what in us rackets glad, what glad rackets us. And thank you to this knuckle-headed heart, this pelican heart, this gap tooth heart flinging open its gaudy maw to the sky. Oh, clumsy, oh, bumblefuck, oh, giddy, oh, dumbstruck, oh, rickshaw, oh, goat twisting its head at me from my peach tree's highest branch balanced and possibly gobbling the last fruit, its tongue working like an engine, a lone sweet drop tumbling by some miracle into my mouth like the smell of someone I've loved. Heart like an elephant screaming at the bones of its dead. Heart like the lady on the bus dressed head to toe in gold, the sun shivering her shiny boots, singing Erica Badu to herself, leaning her head against the window. And thank you to the way my father one time came back in a dream by plucking the two cables beneath my chin like a bass fiddle strings and played me until I woke singing. No kidding, I was singing and smiling. Thank you. Thank you, stumbling into the garden where the Juneberry's flowers had burst open like the bells of French horns. The lily my mother and I planted oozed into the air. The bazillion ants labored in their earthen workshops below. The collard greens waved in the wind like the sails of ships, and the wasps swam in the mint bloom's viscous swill. And you, again you, for hanging tight, friends. I know I can be long-winded sometimes. I want so badly to rub the sponge of gratitude over every last thing, which includes you, which, yes, is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> little crystals of soap going behind your glasses and down your shirt. <clears throat> Soon it will be over. Which is precisely what the child in my dream said, holding my hand, pointing at the roiling sea and the sky, hurtling our way like so many buffalo, who said, it's much worse than we think. <laughs> and sooner. To whom I said, no duh, child in my dreams. <laughs> What do you think this singing and shuddering is? What this screaming and reaching and dancing and crying is other than loving what every second goes away? Goodbye, I mean to say. And thank you every day.